In this demo, I'm going to introduce Crew AI, which is a Python-based framework for creating and orchestrating AI agents that can collaborate on tasks. For the demo, I'm going to use AWS SageMaker, which is a cloud-based Jupyter notebook environment for building and running machine learning and AI applications. I'm also going to utilize AWS S3, which is AWS's most popular option for cloud storage. And I'm going to use this to store the AI-generated outputs from Crew AI. I'm going to start by creating a SageMaker notebook. So here I'm logged into AWS. I'm going to find the Amazon SageMaker service. I'll search here. This takes me to Amazon SageMaker. I'm going to go to Amazon SageMaker AI. Here I can create a new notebook and start writing code. I'm going to go to notebooks. I'm going to scroll down and I can see notebook instances that are running. Each notebook is associated with an instance. I'm going to create a new instance. This will spin up the necessary AWS services that are required to run the notebook. I'll give this a unique name. I'll call this Crew AI Demo V3. For the notebook instance type, I'm going to choose ML T2 Medium. The notebook instance type is basically the type of server that AWS is going to spin up to support your notebooks. I'm going to keep all of the default permissions and encryption. And I'm going to click Create Notebook Instance. This could take a few minutes to spin up. You can see here it's pending. Give it some time. You can refresh here. Eventually, this will show in service, which means it's running. There we go. I'm going to click Open Jupyter. Give that a second to load. From this screen, I can create a new notebook. I'm going to go to New, Conda Python 3. This type of pre-configured environment is good for general Python and AI or ML development without any particular deep learning frameworks pre-installed. There's the notebook. I'm going to go ahead and rename it. Click here. I'll rename this Crew AI Demo. Click Rename. Now I'm ready to go. I'm going to put my code in the individual cells. Here's the first bit of code, including some documentation. First thing we're going to do is install some required packages, if not already installed. We're going to install Crew AI, which is the framework for orchestrating AI agents and tasks. PyOWM, which is the Python client library for the Open Weather Map API. OpenAI, which is OpenAI's official Python client for GPT models. Bodo3, which is the AWS SDK for Python used to interact with other AWS services. And Langchain Community, which is a new module in Langchain that contains community-maintained tools, utilities, and integrations. Langchain is basically a framework that helps facilitate the integration of large language models into applications. I'm going to pip install all of these packages. This could take a few minutes to install. While everything's installing, let me explain what we're going to do in this demo. First, we're going to use Crew AI to fetch real-time weather data using the Open Weather API. Then we're going to use Crew AI to process and analyze that weather data using the OpenAI API and to create a forecast based on that data. And then we're going to save the results to an S3 bucket. The next code I'm going to add is for importing the necessary libraries. OS for interacting with the operating system. JSON for handling JSON objects. I'll import requests in case I need to handle any API calls directly. And then from Crew AI, I'm going to import agent, task, and crew. These are part of the Crew AI core functionality. I'm actually going to delete this. I don't think I'm going to need to use requests directly. I'm also going to import some necessary tools and utilities. From crewai.tools, I'm going to import base tool. This is for defining custom tools in Crew AI. From Pedantic, I'm going to import field. This is for defining tool attributes. And then from Langchain Community.utilities, I'm going to import the Open Weather Map API wrapper. This allows me to use the Open Weather API from within a custom Crew AI tool. Let me run this code. The next bit of code is going to set some environmental variables using the OS package. I'm going to set my API key for interacting with Open AI. I'm going to set my API key for interacting with the Open Weather Map. And I'm going to specify a default model for Open AI. In terms of where to get the API keys that you see here, I've already set these up in my accounts. You're going to want to set up your own API keys. Here's the API key I set up in my OpenAI account. You can see it here. And here's the API key I set up in my Open Weather Map account. Again, you're going to want to set up your own API keys. 
by storing these API keys in environment variables, our code, specifically crew AI, will be able to find these values when needed. My next bit of code first creates an instance of the OpenWeather API wrapper. This is a special class which wraps the OpenWeather map API, which is basically a way of interacting with the weather map via the API. Then I define a custom class weather tool for Crew AI. Crew AI allows you to create custom tools that you can use inside of the Crew AI agents. I'll talk more about agents in a moment. In this case, the class weather tool is a template for a custom crew AI tool. I give the class a name attribute, which is weather. I give it a description attribute, weather tool for fetching real-time weather information for a given location. And I give the class a weather attribute, which points to the open weather map API wrapper class. This is what's actually used to call the API to get the real-time weather. Then I define this special run function, which takes a given location as a string, and then here in the try, it calls the run function for the open weather map API wrapper, given that location, which will return the real time weather information or an error if there's an exception. We'll run this code. This code creates an instance of the weather tool class that I defined above. So it allows me to actually use the weather tool. And then here I'm going to define two crew AI agents. The first agent is the data fetcher agent. Its name is data fetcher. Its role is weather data collector. Its goal is to retrieve real time weather for a given location. You can see location is inside of curly braces, which means it's a placeholder for dynamic information that will be inserted later. And then what's its backstory? It's an AI meteorologist specializing in structured weather data collection. And here for tools, I give it the list of tools that it can use. I'm going to attach the weather tool that I created above. It's going to use that to collect the real-time weather data. And here I have my data analyzer agent. The name is data analyzer. Its role is weather data analyst. And the goal here is to analyze weather data and generate a detailed forecast. Also, the given temperature values are in Celsius. It should convert them to Fahrenheit and it can use the given formula. This goal is important because it's going to be used in the prompt that's provided to the LLM that will access using the OpenAI API. And the backstory? An AI-driven meteorologist specializing in natural language weather reports. This is also going to be used in our prompt when we give it to the LLM. Notice we're not providing any tools to this agent. It's going to use the default LLM and the OpenAI API key that we provided earlier. Let's run this code. For this code, I define two crew AI tasks. For the first task, you can see the description is to fetch real-time weather data for a given location. Again, it's dynamic inside of curly braces. The location will be inserted later. And then we tell the task which agent is responsible for the task. In this case, the data fetcher. And here's the data fetcher agent that we defined up here. And then we describe the expected output from the task. In this case, structured weather data. I'm actually going to change this expected output. I'm going to be a little more specific. The task is going to return wind speed, humidity, temperature, rain, heat index, and cloud cover. and the temperature will be in Celsius. That's the default format for the weather map API. And then I have my second task here. What's the description to analyze the given weather data and generate a professional forecast. The agent that's gonna take care of this task is the data analyzer defined above. And the expected output is a human readable weather report summarizing conditions. And then here I'm gonna provide an input. The input to the second task will be the output from task one. So task two receives weather info from task one. Let me update the comment accordingly. Task two receives weather info from task one. Let's run this code and define our tasks. 
Now let's put this all together and define a crew AI workflow. For this code, I'm actually creating a crew. You can see I'm providing a list of the agents and a list of the tasks and setting verbose to true. This enables verbose mode, so I can see the full execution logs while it's running. To allow this entire workflow to work, I need to identify a location from where I want to get the weather data. We're going to get the weather from Philadelphia. And then I'm going to kick off the crew to run the entire workflow. When I do that, I can provide a dictionary of inputs to the crew. In this case, I'm providing the key of location and the value is the actual city where I want to get the weather data from. In this case, it's Philadelphia. And that location information will get passed to the necessary agents within the crew. If I run this, we launch the crew. You can see the output here, the first agent, weather data collector, and the first task, which is fetching the real-time weather data for Philadelphia. I can see the location there. And the weather data collector is using the weather tool that we created to reach out to the weather API to get the real-time weather information for Philadelphia. I can see the output here. And here's the final weather data for Philadelphia. And then the weather data analyst to analyze the weather data and generate a professional forecast. It's going to use the OpenAI API and the GPT-4 model to do this. And here's our summary and forecast based on that real-time weather data. It's also converting the given temperature in Celsius to Fahrenheit. It's using the LLM to do that. Make a couple of slight changes here in task two. Let me remove this colon, add a period. I'm going to rerun this. If I rerun it, it's going to generate a different summary and forecast because it is using an LLM. Here are the agent outputs, and then we can see our new summary and forecast. And it's a bit different. Still converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. But this output is a little long, so I'm going to make another update. Let me go back up here to the goal of the data analyzer agent. I'm going to update this. One paragraph max, which will be fed into the LLM. Let me rerun all of this. And now you'll see the final output from the weather data analyst is a one paragraph forecast. For the final part of this demo, I want to save the output, the final forecast, to a file in an S3 bucket. And of course, I want this to be automatic. The first thing I'm going to do is create a bucket in Amazon S3. So let me search for S3. There it is, S3. I'm going to go ahead and create a bucket. I'll give the bucket a unique name. This is basically a repository or a folder inside of Amazon's S3. There it is, Crew AI Weather Output. I'm going to make sure I block all public access. I'll use all of the other default settings. And then I'm going to create the bucket. There it is. I'll click on it. All the information from my bucket. This is where I'm going to store the output from my Crew AI workflow, the forecast files. Since I've blocked all public access to this bucket, I need to set up a user with the proper permissions to access the bucket directly. This user account is going to be used in my code from within my SageMaker notebook. To set up a user account, I'm going to go to IAM, Identity and Access Management, go to Users, create a user. Let me provide a username. Since this user is going to be used for accessing the S3 bucket, I'll just say S3 access user. Since I only need programmatic access to S3, I'm going to leave the box unchecked next to provide user access to the AWS management console. Don't need that. And then I'll click next. Now I need to give this user access to S3. I'm going to attach policies directly. So I'm going to click over here. Then I'm going to search for the appropriate policy. Amazon S3. I'm going to provide full access to S3 for this user. You could drill down to the specific S3 bucket if you wanted to. For this example, I'm just going to provide full access. Click Next. 
Here's the permission summary. I'm going to click create user. And this creates a user with the permissions to fully access S3. Let's view more details about the user here. I'm going to go to security credentials. I'm going to go ahead and create some security credentials for the user. This is going to be by creating an access key. They'll use the access key programmatically to access the S3 bucket. Click create access key. I have to choose the specific use case. I'm going to select application running on an AWS compute service. That's what SageMaker is. I'll confirm here. Then I'll click next. Create access key. Here's the access key and the secret access key. You're going to need both. So I'm going to copy those and put those someplace. I'm going to copy this. Then I'll copy this. Now I'm back in my code. I'm going to use those S3 security credentials and the access keys to access the S3 bucket. I'm going to start by adding some additional environmental variables. I'm going to create a new cell here and add the code. Here I'm storing the access key, the secret access key, and the default AWS region. Let me rerun these cells. And then here I'm going to add a couple of additional imports that I'm going to need later. From date time, I'm going to import date time. And then I'm going to import BOTO3. This is to create the S3 client which will allow us to interact with the S3 bucket. Here, I'm going to insert a new cell. Let me store the name of the bucket. That's the name of the bucket that we created in S3. Add another cell. Here, I create an S3 client using BOTO3, and then I define a new function, save to S3. This takes a file name and some data to write to that file. Here, it casts that data to a string if it needs to and then defines a file path within the S3 bucket. It'll create a subdirectory weather reports and then store the file itself. And then we use the S3 client and we call the put object function. We give it the bucket name. The key is the file path, including the file name. And the body is the text data, which it's gonna write to the file. I'm gonna call this save to S3 function here towards the bottom of my code. After I kick off the crew, I'm gonna add my code right here. The report data will be set to the results of the crew kickoff. Here's my file name. I'm formatting the file name based on the current date and time. And then I'm going to call the save to S3 function with the file name and the results of the crew kickoff. If I run this cell, I'll see my agent output again. I'll see my forecast and I'll see that the report was saved to the repository in S3. Let's take a look at that S3 bucket in AWS. Here it is. I'm going to refresh the page. There's my subdirectory weather reports inside of that folder. I see my forecast text file. I'll click that to see the details. I'll click download to actually download the text file. And then I can view that here. And there it is. The latest forecast saved to a text file in the S3 bucket and I'll navigate back to the weather reports folder in the S3 bucket.